ogres, trolls, and giants, oh my. At one time, there were definite differences between these fairy tale creatures. Over time, it's become harder and harder to identify one from the other. And the following story, I'm afraid, may confuse us even a little more. But it's a fun one, so I simply couldn't resist. Welcome to the Italian fairy tale, The Feathered Ogre. Up on the mountain, the one with seven peaks, lives an ogre. Not just an ordinary, everyday, run-of-the-mill ogre. No, this is a special ogre. This ogre has magical feathers that are known to cure all ailments. The ogre had one more special gift. He knew everything. No, he wasn't just someone who thought he knew everything. He literally knew everything. Everyone in the kingdom wanted to get close enough to claim a feather as their own. But this wasn't easy. There was one problem, and that problem was he ate everyone that tried to get close to him. So one would have to be pretty desperate to make that attempt, don't you think? Below the Seven Peak Mountain was a kingdom with a king who was deathly ill. The court physician had done everything he could possibly do to try to help the king, but nothing worked. His court advisors finally realized that they were left with only one possible cure, and that was to obtain a feather from the ogre. They knew this would work because every once in a while, the ogre would drop a feather during his travels and whoever found this treasure was immediately cured of whatever ailed them. Yes, unfortunately, this was their only hope. I would gladly get the feather for you, offered an advisor, but with all my children, my wife really needs my help. Oh, I too would be honored to secure this healing feather, um, but my mother is very ill and has no one to sit with her, offered another man of the court. On and on, the king's subjects said they wanted to help, but had many reasons why they were unable to make this dangerous journey. I'll go, said a man in the very back of the room. I have nobody who needs me, and I would be honored to serve my king. Everyone clapped and patted him on the back as he approached his king. Thank you, young man. Please be quick, urged the dying king. That afternoon, the brave man was escorted to the road by members of the court. They showed the man which direction to walk. The mountain is that way, announced an advisor, pointing towards the horizon. When you get closer, you will see that the mountain has seven peaks. The ogre's cave will be found in the seventh peak. Safe travels, wished the man who very very quickly turned and hightailed it back into the king's castle. The young man started down the road with a bag full of food and items he would need for the journey wrapped up tight in a blanket and thrown over his shoulder. Nightfall came and he approached an inn in hopes of finding a bed on which to lay his head. The innkeeper informed him that there was one bed left for which the traveler was grateful. As the two men warmed up by the fire, the innkeeper inquired as to where he was going and was very surprised when he heard the plan to go to the ogre's cave. Do you have any idea how dangerous that will be? Asked the older man who then got quiet. If you are able to get a feather, 
would you get an extra one for me? And if possible, could you also ask the ogre if he knows the whereabouts of my daughter who has been missing for so many years? I have missed her so very much and want nothing more than to bring her home, said the man with tears in his eyes. The young man agreed to get an extra feather and to ask the ogre about his daughter, if he could. As the sun rose, the traveler was on his way. He approached the river's edge where he would wait for the ferry to take him across. The ferryman asked for a couple of coins in payment and allowed the man onto his boat. As they rowed, the ferryman inquired as to where he was going. And after hearing the answer, the ferryman asked, If you are able, could you get a feather for me? Perhaps you could also ask the ogre why I have been forced to stay on this ferry, unable to get off. The traveler agreed that he would indeed get a feather for the ferryman and to ask the question if he could. Soon the mountaintop came into view. The man was getting more excited with every step as he was now close enough to see the peaks. He would be there soon. The traveler came to a crossroad and sitting on the side of the dirt road were two noblemen discussing how their fortunes had just disappeared overnight. Noticing the visitor, they asked where he was traveling and became very interested when the young man mentioned the ogre. Could you please bring us back a feather? And while you're there, could you ask the ogre why our fortunes disappeared overnight? The young man agreed to get an extra feather and ask the ogre about the missing fortunes, if he could. The noblemen were very surprised by the generosity of the traveler, for they did not expect him to agree to getting an additional feather as that would only increase his risk. They just thought they'd ask just in case. Why would you help us? You don't even know us, asked the men. Why not, answered the young man. What do you know about the ogre? Well, I know he lives in a cave on the seventh peak. If that is all you know, then you are surely doomed, said the nobleman, shaking his head. Because the traveler was willing to help them, the nobleman decided to help him out by giving him all the information they knew. Yes, they knew a few things about the feathered and feared ogre and they began to quickly educate the man. Listen carefully. You must do as we ask. The ogre always leaves his cave at sundown. Wait until that time to enter the cave. When you get inside, go all the way to the end. It will be extremely dark, so we will give you a candle to light your way. When you get to the end of the cave, you will find a rather large door. If you are lucky, the ogre's wife will be there to answer. Trust us when we say she is your only hope for getting the feathers and escaping with your very life. Grateful for the information, the traveler made his way to the top of the mountain and passed the first six peaks. As soon as he began to climb the seventh peak, the woods became darker and very eerie. It felt as if the brambles were grabbing for his legs, 
almost as if they were trying to keep him from going any further. But he forged on. He simply had to do whatever it took to get the feathers and answers to all the questions. He finally reached the top of the seventh peak and immediately saw the cave. Thankful for the candle, he found his way back to where a large wooden door was closed before him. He knocked. The door slowly creaked open. And much to his surprise, a beautiful young woman peered at him from behind the heavy door. The ogre's wife was equally surprised to find another human looking back at her. Who are you? What are you doing here? She asked. If my husband smells you, he will eat you instantly. The young man quickly told her about his ailing king and the other three requests for feathers and advice. The two quickly made a plan. Hurry, we must find a place to hide you where your human smell might not be quite as strong. <gasps> she thought and quickly led him to their bed where he urged him to quickly hide underneath. The goose feathers in the bed and pillows might be strong enough to cover up your scent. And as he crawled underneath, she told him to be very still and quiet. She added, I have been trying to escape for a long time now. If this works, we'll both get what we need and be able to escape. If not then we both will surely perish. She hushed him and hurried to the stove to stir the stew that was simmering in, on the fire in hopes that the smell of the food would help to cover the smell of man. A few minutes later, the ogre returned. He stopped and took a big long sniff. Wife, I smell man. Oh, I'm going to have a very satisfying dinner tonight. Husband, what man would risk his life by coming here? She calmly asked. I know the smell of man, yelled the ogre as he began <laughs> sniffing around the tables and chairs. Don't be ridiculous, she responded. You are just very hungry and you wish you smelled man. You'll have to be satisfied by stew this evening, she added as she served him a big helping. After several servings of stew, the ogre still insisted that he could smell man. His wife answered, you are so tired that you are imagining that you can smell human. Now come to bed and you will be better in the morning, I promise. As the ogre settled into bed, he turned to his wife and agreed, You must be right, wife. I must be tired. The smell of human is so strong, it smells as if it could be coming from under my bed. How ridiculous is that? Oh, he yawned and started to drift asleep. As soon as the owner began snoring, ogre began snoring, his wife turned towards him and plucked out a feather and quickly handed it to the man under the bed. Ouch! The ogre screamed. What did you do that for? Oh, I'm sorry, husband. I was having a strange dream. I must have rolled over on one of your feathers and pulled it out. Of course, it was an accident. What was your dream? Oh, it was a strange dream. I 
dreamt about two noblemen who were angry about losing their fortunes overnight. They were trying to figure out how that could have happened. Oh, that is a fact, actually, answered the ogre in the middle of a yawn. There are two noblemen who live at the base of the mountain who have lost their fortunes there in the garden between their two estates. There is a fountain, and if they were to dig at the mouth of that fountain, they would find a snake that is blocking the flow of gold and silver. If they got rid of the snake, their fortunes would be restored. Oh, well, good night then, said the wife as she rolled away from her husband. <sniffs> and within a minute, the snoring began again. She rolled back towards him and plucked a second feather and quickly handed it to the man under the bed. <gasps> Oh, yelled the ogre, what is going on with you tonight? Oh, I'm sorry, she said very sweetly. I must have rolled over on your feathers again with another strange dream. What is it this time? This time, it's a ferryman who has been stuck on his ferry for years. He can't get off the ferry and wonders why. Strange, isn't it? Your dreams are strange and true, he responded. The ferryman can escape. All he has to do is take the customer across the river and jump off the ferry before the customer has a chance to pay him. The customer will now be stuck on the ferry and the ferryman will be free. Now, good night, exclaimed the ogre as he forcefully rolled over with a huff. This better be the end of your dreams, he mumbled as he drifted off to sleep again. Oh, you know all, husband. Sweet dreams, said the maiden as she pretended to roll over to sleep. The snoring started up almost immediately. This time the woman rolled over and plucked two feathers and once again quickly handed them to the man. By thunder, am I not to get even one moment's peace tonight? Was it another dream? He demanded. Yes, it was. This time an innkeeper came to me wondering what had happened to his daughter who disappeared many years ago. Oh, he seemed so sad, she added. This one is easy and it better be the last one. The daughter he is missing is you. The ogre rolled on his side, not to be woken again until the morning. As the ogre sat down to eat his breakfast, he informed his wife that he could once again <laughs> smell man. This time I am not hungry or tired. His wife quickly led him to the door and informed him that if he didn't leave right now, he would miss out on his opportunity to have a very good day and he best get on with it as quickly as possible. The ogre had no choice but to do as she instructed. As soon as they felt it safe, the woman and young man left the cave and ran down the mountain to their freedom. They found the two noblemen and gave them the feather and shared the information about the snake. Then they quickly hustled to the river and waited for the ferryman, who was delighted to receive the feather. He asked about his dilemma, and they told him that they would be happy to share after they got to the other side. 
As soon as the pair safely made it to the opposite bank of the river, they were st and they were standing on the ground, they informed the ferryman that he would finally gain his freedom if they did exactly as they told him. The next stop was the inn, and the innkeeper was overcome with joy to see his daughter again after all this time. He encouraged the two to stay with him as he could see that they had started to fall in love. But the young man insisted on continuing his journey as quickly as possible for he had to deliver the final feather to his king who by this point must be in desperate need. He only hoped he wasn't too late. The innkeeper bid them farewell, knowing that his daughter was in safe hands and that he would see her again soon. The maiden and the man made it to the king's castle just in time. The court was surprised to see him, and as they, has, they had assumed that he too had become a victim of the ogre, even more shocked was the king, who, with one brush of the feather, was able to jump to his feet with vim and vigor that he hadn't shown in a very long time. As a token of, of appreciation for saving the king's life, the young man and maiden were immediately married and given a royal cottage of their very own, where they lived happily for the remainder of their lives. What? The ogre? Oh! You want to know what happened to the ogre? Well, he was furious. He followed the scent of human down the mountain and finally made it to the river where he waited very impatiently for the ferry. The ferryman took him across the river and as soon as the land was close enough, the ferryman jumped to the riverbank giving him the freedom he had so longed for leaving the ogre on the ferry forevermore.